Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I thought I'd make a video to discuss a recent new excuse I've been getting or some type of, uh, it's not, not really a justification, but they're throwing this out in a debate, a vegan debate, and I've got it quite a bit. And it's that, what are the farmers going to do? What are the farmers going to grow instead, Joey? It's your responsibility, Joey, as a vegan activist, to tell us what to grow or what we should transition into. Now, there's a few problems with this. And I'll start with the most obvious, and that is that when we look at issues of injustice, we always look at it from the victim's perspective, not the oppressor. Sorry, farmers. You guys and the, the non-vegans who are paying for them to go to slaughterhouses and are using them as property are the oppressors. So we have to look at this from the animal's point of view. That is the most obvious uh, to me. But also, some people think, I don't know, it's kind of like a diversion tactic or a distraction that if somehow we change farmers into plant farmers or I come up with this great plan to, to transition their farm into a plant farm, that somehow that's gonna change the world into a vegan world. No, that has nothing to do with it. It's completely irrelevant. I'll tell you why. If I convinced a hundred farmers to farm plants, to farm soybeans for soy milk, to farm almond milk, to, to farm some type of, of crop, is that gonna stop the demand? No, it's not. It's not gonna stop the demand. The demand will still be there. So it's not gonna change anything if a farmer starts growing plants. What we need to do is change the mind of the consumer and the consumer dictates what the farmers grow. Now why would the farmer even change his business if it's still profitable? He's not going to. And even if he did, it wouldn't change anything. That Now, we should be focusing on the fact that the farmers are non-vegan and are contributing to the suffering of the animals through their food and lifestyle choices. That is more important because to distract me by saying, hey Joey, you know, you're a vegan activist, you're an animal rights activist, tell us what to what to farm. Now I start rattling off things, oh, potatoes, oh, we can't grow that on our land. Uh, soybeans, we can't grow that on our land. Well, okay, so it's kind of a diversionary tactic to steer away from the core point. We shouldn't be using animals as property. We shouldn't be enslaving them. We shouldn't be treating them as a product. This is the core point. This was the Southern argument for slavery. I've got this source here, I'll, I'll link it below. Defenders of slavery, argued that the sudden end to the slave economy would have a profound and killing economic impact in the South, where reliance on slave labor was the foundation of their econ economy. Wow, the reliance of slave labor was a foundation of their economy. Would that justify having slaves just because it's a foundation to their economy? The cotton economy would collapse. The tobacco crop would dry in the fields. The rice would cease being profitable. Defenders of slavery argued that if all slaves were freed, there would be widespread unemployment and chaos. The argument for slavery was that there would be, you know, this, this widespread um, unemployment and chaos and the slaves couldn't pick the cotton anymore. Now, is that looking at it from the victim's perspective, from the human beings who were being oppressed perspective? No, that is like spitting in those human beings' faces and saying, hey, money trumps your, uh, Moral value, money trumps your life. The economic factor is not an argument at all and it's actually a, a distraction. What my point is and what my position is, is it's not up to me to tell a farmer how to transform their crops, how to transform their farm, their animal farm, their slave farm essentially into something more ethical. That is not up to me. But my team of researchers at Vegan Education Centre have come up with a bunch of profitable plants and you don't even have to farm plants on your uh, your land to use your land. Farmers alternatives. Now greenhouses uh, to grow herbs for restaurants. Greenhouses are amazing. You grow tomatoes and everything in there. Vertical farms, vertical farms grow up. I've heard this before too. Airbnb huts on your land. Like you could uh, build some uh, little huts for Airbnbs. Airbnbs massive now. You can rent out those places for a lot. What else the farmers do to generate income? They do uh, consulting, freelancing, contracting, they teach at local schools, continue education centers, they teach workshops on farming, I guess, uh, classes. So basically there's many things that they can do to, to use their land. That now, farmers are supposed to be businessmen, that's up to them. 
The point, the, the main point is, okay, before I start getting into these lucrative pl uh, plants farmers can grow, the farmers will be forced to change once demand changes. And that is our job as vegan activists. Don't let farmers get you into this, you know, steer you into this area where, oh, you have to transform my farm there, otherwise I'm not gonna grow plants. No, they will be forced to change when, when consumers demand they change. They're just supplying what the public want. So it's completely irrelevant whether they're on side with us or off side with us. Obviously we want everyone to be on side so that they, you know, embrace this new lifestyle and you know when they when they do change they're more enthusiastic about it. But completely irrelevant whether they want to or whether they don't want to. Uh, demand when demand change they'll be forced to change. Lucrative plants farmers can grow on their land. Ginseng. A hundred thousand dollars on a half acre plot. So over the six year period, growers can make as much as a hundred grand on a half acre plot from seeds, rootlets, and mature roots with ginseng. Gourmet mushrooms, look at this. 10 times 10 square foot patch of mushrooms can bring 17 and a half grand per season. Wow, gourmet mushrooms. Uh, bamboo, bamboo, uh, many bamboo nurseries. So a bamboo nursery can, can reach uh, prices from up to $200 per plant. So if they're growing bamboo, they can sell it to nurseries and they use it when they're decorating and stuff like that. Herbs, herbs are big. Uh, you can grow them in a greenhouse uh, for restaurants. Medicinal marijuana or hemp. Now this is a big one. This is gonna be a big lucrative industry. There's hemp can be transformed into many things, clothing, uh, plastics, it cleans the soil. Uh, medicinal marijuana there's a market for. Obviously it's a little bit controversial, a little bit taboo there. The point is, this is what I do not want you to steer away from this point because this is a distraction to the core issue. It is not up to us to transform their farm. We're just here to speak for animals and to say, hey, that is immoral. Just like what was happening to human slaves and is still happening to human slaves today is immoral. It doesn't matter if it's a lucrative business, if it's part of the econ economy, if you know all these people are making money off of it. Irrelevant to the morality of it. So that's a, that's a video I just wanted to make about this. I've been getting a lot of uh, comments, questions, and it's been coming up in debate. It is not our job. Our job is to speak for animals, change the demand, change the minds of the consumer, okay? And if you wanna help farmers, that's amazing. That's great, good work, you, you're helping farmers. But why would they change? Why would they change their, their farm if there is still a demand for dairy, eggs, and meat? If they're still making cash off that? If that farmer stops producing dairy, eggs, meat, chicken, guess what? The farmer next door who's still doing it is gonna make more money because the demand still exists. We have to target demand. We have to target consumers. Putting me up against the farmer on, on the radio, yeah, that might be pretty cool to watch and stuff like that. Completely irrelevant to um, this movement. They will be forced to change when demand changes. I had to reiterate that a few times. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I just thought I would highlight how absurd this is that we're worried more about econ economy. Even though I do sympathize with farmers, I really do, that we're worried more about economy than the value of these animals' lives. And that it's a complete distraction. Also, the Vegan Society do offer workshops for farmers if there's farmers that wanna go vegan and they wanna transform their farm. That's a different story. Uh, so yeah, they, they've made an ethical decision. They don't want to uh, harm and slave, use animals as property anymore. They've had a vegan revolution in their lives. The Vegan Society uh, can look after all their needs. They're working on doing research and transforming farms for people that are interested. But like I said, supply and demand situation, hit the consumer, keep spreading that message and don't get distracted by these red herrings, which are beside the, the main point. Thank you very much. Peace.